fast one-handed 16ths show up in a bunch of songs, but they're tough. I feel ya. But hey, there is a cheat you can use to half your effort. I'll show you how to hack the process, and I'll give you some tips for making your 16ths much more smooth and polished and professional sounding. You can do this. Hey, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer, where we help you become the drummer and musician who sounds awesome, nailing songs, and having a blast doing it, and playing well with a band. And we do this by teaching you the core non-glamorous drumming skills that get you results faster. You're busy, you only have so much time to practice, so I wanna help you grow fast. And hey, speaking of growing fast, you have to eliminate the big obstacles that stand in your way if you're gonna grow quickly. I have a totally free gift for you that's gonna help you out a bunch with this. If you have a giant obstacle that is keeping you from growing, until you focus on that, until you get rid of it, you're not gonna grow. And for so many of us, it is the weak hand. If you have a weak hand that can't do what the strong hand can do, you're gonna struggle to play smooth, even fills. You're always gonna feel inhibited by that and frustrated by it. So I wanna help you solve your weak hand. Join my totally free mini course. It's called Eliminate Your Weak Hand in Three Steps because that is what we do. Nice and simple, straightforward, not rocket science. It's totally free. I want you to achieve freedom with your hands so that you have fluidity and can play the stuff you wanna play and you're not held back by that. I want you to be able to play music. And so eliminating that weekend is gonna help you out a bunch. It's gonna help you even more with today's lesson too. So hey, when we get done, click that link in the description, go join the Eliminate Your Weekend in Three Steps course. It is totally free, my gift to you. All right, let's get on with today's lesson. Here's the problem. <laughs> Fast one-handed hi-hat 16ths like this, They're fast and they're tough to do well. It's hard to make them sound good. It's hard to play them smoothly. It's hard to not get exhausted. But we hear this in so many songs and so we know this is an important drumming skill. We've gotta learn, gotta get good at this or else there's always gonna be songs that we wanna play where we're just left being frustrated and not being able to play. And that's a frustrating place to be, to, to hear a really cool song and wanna learn a cool song and not be able to play the 16th timekeeping part. Whether it's a song like Africa, Africa by Toto is a big one. That's like 93 beats a minute. It's a very fast one. Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton has a unique hi-hat 16th pattern, and that's the one we're really gonna talk about today. And that song's 94 beats a minute. Typical by Mute Math. So <laughs> um, that is not a song for uh, the faint of heart to try to learn. Typical by Mute Math is a crazy drum part. Darren King is an insane drummer. But that song is 97 beats a minute, and in the, the verses he's playing, just going at it with one end of 16th, it's incredible. But that is probably the fastest song I can think of that just has da, 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 97 beats a minute. We've got all these fast songs and we wanna be able to learn these, we wanna be able to play them, but this is hard. So how can we, how can we kind of hack the process and find easier ways to do this? Well, I've, I've been through this myself. I remember trying to play Rosanna was really my song. I was trying to play Rosanna, Jeff Percaro drum part, which like Africa has a quick dun, 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 but it swung in the case of Rosanna, which makes it even more difficult. And so I remember getting to where I could blast my way through it and like, but it was just stiff and awkward. And that's probably what you found yourself doing, getting to where, okay, you can play this stuff, but it just doesn't feel right. And that was my problem. It just wasn't musical until I learned some tricks and a cheat that makes this kind of stuff more effortless. And I was able to use some of these basic tips, of course, across the board to make all of my hi-hat 16th patterns sound better. But there's also a really cool cheat you can employ that works really well in a lot of scenarios and makes this a lot easier. So that's what we're diving into today. Hack the process by dropping out a note which actually halves your effort. At least that's my uh, imprecise mathematical, not exactly precise math definition here. But by leaving out one of the notes in this pattern, I think you can actually make these twice as easy to play. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I mentioned Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton. And that song, if you really listen to that hi-hat pattern in that song, he's not playing You know, it's got that guitar part. You've probably heard it before. If you haven't, go check it out. Popular song. He's not doing that the whole way. What he's doing is one and a two and a three and a four. So leaving out the E's. It's really cool because when you take the E's out of each, you know, if you think of each beat as four sixteenths, so one E and a, if you leave out one of those, and you're only playing three instead of four, it's so much less effort. 
It's funny how that works, and there's a lot of reasons behind this, but you can, you can do that and remove the E to really make this a lot easier. So let's say you're playing Africa, and the way Africa starts out, um, kind of like that. Instead, you could play. And it's still a very similar feel. It still kind of works. So let's talk about this a little bit more. There are two variations of this. You can take out the E's and have that ta, 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 ta which we hear in a lot of songs. The less common variation is kind of the inverse of this, where we play one E N, two E N, three E N, and so we put those three right there at the front instead of the back end, so we're removing the uhs, one E N, two E N. We're silencing the uh of the beat and we're just playing on the first three sixteenths. So that's an option, or Now, here's where it gets interesting. We'll, we'll dive into a little more of the technical here. I think the ta, 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 ta is e the easier of the two when on the hi-hat, but I think the ta, 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 I think that one is easier when on the ride. The reason why is because when we're on the ride, we can just throw the stick down. I made a video about this a while back, a lesson specifically on this, which I'll link below, where literally you can just throw the stick at the ride. And with pretty much zero effort, you get three notes. But da da, because it's just the rebound. It's just like the free bounce. That was a whole bunch of notes for the effort of one. And if I stop it after three, the more pressure I put on the stick, the faster they are. So we can do the same thing on the ride. And because we want our accent on the beat, ba ba ba, da da da, da da da, it's okay that they're not even in volume. Loud, medium, soft, loud, medium, soft. And so that totally works. You can just throw the stick onto the ride. Technically, yes, you could do this on the hi-hats if you stay on top. But I think it feels better. It just, it just works better on the ride. Now, we can also do the same bum, ba 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 We can do the, that inverse, ta, 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 ta. We could do that on the ride. But the reason why I think it works so well on hi-hat even though the ta-ta-ta, ta-ta-ta, I think that works best on the ride, but the inverse works better on the hats, is because we can do this. We can do top-top edge, top-top edge, and that's really what we're boiling down to here. That's really the big hack. Yes, the, the throwing your stick at the ride and getting three notes for the price of one, that's definitely hackish material and kind of cool, but what's even more practical, I think, because we're gonna use this more often than we'll use that, is the ability to go top, top, edge, top, top, edge. When we're doing a normal molar pattern, dun, 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 we're going edge, top, edge, top, edge, top. That's the whole motion this is based off of. We have a lesson here on the channel specifically about this, which I'll also link, because I want you to be able to go in more depth and get all the details on these motions if you are new to the drums. We're kind of skimming through it today. But that's what we're doing with standard molar, down, up, down, up, edge, top, edge, top, and that up and down motion is what makes this work. It's like there's a hinge point here in the middle of the stick. And so it makes it kind of like a two for the price of one motion where we can get a lot of notes and not feel like we're working really hard. Like if we were playing, that's hard work, but that's a lot less hard, but it still takes time to get there and that's still fast. But if we eliminate one of those notes, we take the E out to where we just have one and the two and the ta, 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 we can incorporate the same molar style motion and go up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, top, top, edge. You can incorporate the different aspects of the hi-hat to your advantage here. You get a lot of rebound when you're up here on top. And then, then as soon as you get those nice light rebounding notes, drop your arm down and get that edge. And as soon as you play the edge, lift your arm back up, edge, top, top, edge, top, top. So really when you put all this together, your arm is moving up, your hand is moving up as you play those two top notes. Edge, top, top, we're going up, 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 down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up. And so really our hand is here for the first and then here for the second and back. So practice that motion super slow. I know it feels awkward when you're going really slow, but if you go super slow, exaggerate the motion, that will help teach this to your hand and to your arm. 
By the way, grip-wise, I'm gonna switch hands to show you better right here in front of the camera. We're, the grip that we're using is a fairly firm grip where we've got our fulcrum up here close to our palm. We talk about this in other lessons too. Long story short, we've got fulcrum close to the palm for a firmer grip. We're not squeezing, but we've got fingers gently wrapped around. This enables us to use our wrist a lot. We can use a lot of wrist power. We're not talking like German palms down versus French. That's not really what we're talking about here. That doesn't matter so much in this context. What matters is that we've got a firmer fulcrum because we're up here close to the palm and we've got the fingers gently wrapped around so that we can really, we can get a lot of power here. And this is an important grip to use when playing on the hats because there's not rebound on the edge. Anytime you're working with low rebound, you have to have that firmer grip. Otherwise, you kind of just lose control of the stick. If we were only playing on top, we could be very loose. Like that, very loose and wide open. But if we're playing on the edge, we're having to use more wrists. We're having to control the stick more, which means we want to have fingers wrapped around a little more and have a firmer fulcrum. Not be tight and tense, just be a little more firm. So that's what we're doing here. You'll probably find the challenge here is quickly going down to get that edge and making sure that's in time and not dragging. So focus on that right there. Focus specifically on going from up here down and doing that quickly. It's almost like a scoop. Just practice that motion. Isolate that and add in the other note there. Also, one added little trick that can be really helpful here, if you're working on training up your fingers, you're doing the French grip finger exercises, you're working on using your fingers and you're playing, you can use a little bit of finger when you play these notes here on the top of the hats. A lot of that is rebound, but if you want them to be louder, more strong, more even, especially even volume wise with that edge note, then really you have to bring in some finger. Now, I kind of say this as like a bonus, if you're able to kind of option, because you don't have to play those top notes loudly. They can be softer. But I think a little bit of finger can go a long way there. And this is the exact same finger motion that we would use playing doubles. Like literally this is doubles, right? This is a direct usage of doubles on the drum set in a musical timekeeping pattern. A big question from students is, what's the practical use of doubles? Why should I learn doubles? This is one of the many right here. And again, we've got lessons on this here on the channel. I'll link this below uh, so you can check out a more extensive doubles lesson. We did a recent series, a three-part series on doubles. But that's, that's the way you want to approach this. Two quick doubles, or one double really. Two quick notes functioning as a double, and then going down to the edge. Now, one little thing that I gotta be honest with you and, and explain here is that if you do this and you remove the E, you end up with a timekeeping pattern that has more of a quarter note feel than an eighth note feel. Because if we're doing this, all the 16ths, this very much has an eighth note accent. One and two and three and bup, 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 bup. But if we remove the E, we end up playing one soft, soft, loud, soft, soft, loud, and only accenting the beats instead of the eighth. So it takes on more of a quarter note pulse. Listen to the difference. The full on pattern has more of an eighth note drive. This other one, when we take out the E's, takes on more of a quarter note pulse. So that's, a, that's something that you gotta ask yourself. Am I okay with it being more of a quarter note pulse? Now, jumping back to the ride, what's kind of cool whenever you do this pattern on the ride instead of on the hats, because the ride is loud and washy and ringy, you can kind of, it, the cheat, the, the cheat part of this works pretty well because you're getting more rebound and you're getting all this wash, so you can more easily play those three notes at equal volume, whether you play ta, 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 or ta, 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 ta. And so when you're moving pretty quick and it's a pretty quick tempo, you can almost fool your listener into thinking that you're doing full on 16ths. So here's the comparison. And I would argue that it's more interesting to remove one of those because otherwise the ride just turns into so much wash and it's kind of annoying. And so, hey, that's just me. I think when you're doing a quick ride 16th timekeeping pattern,
it's more interesting to mix it up like that because it just adds, I don't know, it adds some more motion instead of just being constant. And so I think that's a big plus. I think you can really cheat with this pretty well when you apply this to the ride. And then I think when you do it on the hi-hats, it's definitely twice as easy because you can go faster much more easily and Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton becomes a real possibility. But it is at the expense of losing that eighth note pulse. But that might not be something you need. You might be totally okay with just a more ta -ta 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 relaxed kind of pace that might feel really good for the song you're playing. We've covered a bunch of ground here, and we've talked about how you can hack this whole process, play faster patterns more easily, disguise them pretty well on the ride, and create really cool musical patterns on the hats. But there's still a big problem, and if you are a beginner, this is probably where you're gonna be at right now. And even if you're an intermediate player, this was something that I struggled with and had to spend a lot of time specifically practicing. How do we coordinate this timekeeping pattern with our other limbs? It's one thing to, to figure this out and go, bah, 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 bah. okay, cool, I got that down, feeling good, or ta-ta-ta, ta-ta-ta. One thing to get that happening. Another thing to then tie that into kick and snare patterns because that's hard to do. It's a unique pattern that we're having to really devote a lot of brain power to but we've still gotta then tie that in with the kick and the snare. How are we supposed to do that? So I wanna give you some tips here real quick as we wrap up to help you out with this because these things can get sloppy easily. So as always, go slow, start simple. So wonderful tonight. By the way, these kinds of timekeeping patterns show up a lot in Eric Clapton songs. So I'll just give you that tip. Go listen to, to a lot of Eric Clapton. But wonderful tonight where we've got the I'm going a little bit slower, but it's in halftime. So we're going. Halftime means we're playing the back beat. In this case, I'm just doing a cross stick on beat three instead of on two and four. So the tempo is still fairly quick, but we're making the groove feel very slow. And so practice that right there. We're just adding kick on beat one, snare on beat three. Practice that nice and slow, then practice a regular time feel. So now kick on one and three, snare on two and four. Your focus here listening wise and just the, the big focus needs to be that relationship between the timekeeping pattern and kick and snare. So every time they lock together, every time your hand, your left hand locks in, pay attention to that relationship, make sure it's tight. Right, left, that's kind of what I'm thinking as I'm playing it. Right, to the left, to the right. So I'm thinking about right foot locking and then left hand locking in. Right, left, right, left, right. Then practice this with the variation, the ta-ta-ta, ta-ta-ta, which I like doing on the ride. That was half time, then regular time. Just like that, do it nice and slow, because if you go slow, you're gonna be able to eliminate the sloppiness and get these things tied together. Now, going beyond that, you can work this with more complex kick snare patterns, but I recommend start with ones you already know. So pick a, pick a groove you already know that you can play like with eighth note timekeeping. So let's say it's something like, um let's say that's one you already know. Well, practice playing that with the ta 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 ta. Which you already run into an issue right there, right? You're having to lock the kick with one of those ta ta. So isolate that, focus in on that spot, or just take out that note for now. Keep it really simple and go. and eventually push yourself to start making up kick drum patterns underneath this. That will come with time, not easy at first, but start with kick drum patterns you know, work on tying this in, just practice it really slow. Even if it makes your head feel like it's gonna explode, do it. And then also do it with the ta-ta-ta, ta-ta-ta, which of course you can do on the hats. I like doing it on the ride. There's no limit to what you can do here, but I want you to start really simple, just with money beat, like we first did. 
Then do patterns that you already know that you can do with eighth note timekeeping, just switching up the timekeeping pattern. And then from there, start pushing yourself to, let's see if I can do this. Okay, can I do this? Uh, let's, okay, that grew from that song. Can I do that? Can I start making stuff up? That's where this gets really cool. This is something I've spent years practicing. So I want you to know it's not easy at first and it takes coordination to tie, the, to tie these timekeeping patterns in with different kick drum patterns, especially when you go fast. That's why I can't say enough, go slow. You can play anything when you go slow. When you go fast, things tend to get sloppy. But the more time you spend going slow, the, the better of a foundation you build up so that you can go faster. So practice it slowly, take this step by step, you'll be just fine. Hey, before we wrap up, tell me in the comments, what's the first song you can think of with Fast 16th? Name a Fast 16th song. So maybe, maybe Africa, that's probably one of the most popular Fast 16th songs. Wonderful Tonight, Typical by Mute Math, a crazy one. Name a song that's got quick 16th notes that, uh, that maybe you can employ a lot of what we've talked about today to play well. You could either do the cheat and take out a note or by just focusing on this kind of motion and playing on the edge of the hats, um, a lot of times you can play a pattern like that much more smoothly than you think and, and quickly get that up to speed. Again, for more detail on all of this, we've got some additional lesson, lessons on the da -da -da, da -da -da ride pattern as well as standard molar on the hats. I'll link those below. And don't forget to grab that Eliminate Your Weekend in Three Steps free mini course. It's going to help you out a whole bunch. My free gift to you. If you can eliminate the weekend, that's going to give you so much power to play the stuff you want to play. And you'll be able to quickly step into being the drummer that you know you're made to be and really accomplish great stuff on the drums. So, hey, I hope you've had fun today. I hope you have fun practicing this. Go and take action. Know that you can do this. Stay non-glamorous. I'll see you on the next lesson.